today I'm going to be showing you guys my first jumper skirt that I made with printed fabric. Now this is different than I'm going to do another video where it's my first jump like Lolita jumper skirt I've made ever. But this one is going to be the first one I ever made with actual spoon flower printed fabric from five years ago. So this will be a fun little blast to the past here to kind of not just show the kind of work I used to do or like the first work I did when I was making samples and all that, but it's also going to show you guys the progression of spoon flower in the way that like the quality of their fabric and all that. I'm going to show you guys a comparison in fabric so you guys can see maybe a little bit more of a difference because for whatever reason this dress photographs really well but it's actually very faded in real life so let's get started here is the tote bag for morgan my dear this was something i just made to try making just tried making a tote bag because i'd never made one before i made it with stra scrap fabric this was actually when i did like i did like little sides and everything too so the bag was not just two pieces of fabric it was actually four I used this ultra cheap lace along the top here and it was from like Walmart I believe and I have a little snap on the inside and it has this I don't even know if you can see it but it's got like there we go it's got like a little music note fabric from like Joann's from probably three years prior so eight years at this point <laughs> the bag itself didn't hold up very well because I don't think I used any interfacing on much of it I didn't really know about interfacing I don't think the bow even looks kind of wrinkly because I wasn't like I didn't know that much about interfacing so even here you can't really tell like in like when I'm looking at it it's it's like a pretty saturated red but I can still tell it's kind of faded on camera here it looks a little bit more of a washout red which good maybe it actually looks more accurate <laughs> but also the other thing was that was really irritating about this when I got it was I designed my fabric on Spoonflower. I I checked it so many times to make sure it was just right because this stuff is like $25 a yard or I think it was $28 a yard at the time. And I got the cotton sateen. I checked it and checked it. And what they do is you have like a strip. You have like a strip of fabric of um that you design and you design it like this way. And you design the strip, okay? And then it just repeats. And, well, apparently, I didn't see this very tiny, thin red line when I sent in my repeatable sliver of fabric. So, when I received my very expensive three, I believe I ordered three yards of the fabric. We're talking, like, a $25 a yard, which is, like, already at $75 for the fabric. It had this freaking line on it, and it wasn't even their fault. It was my fault. So I did try talking to them about it, but unfortunately I did notice the error in my design. So I couldn't really dispute that. So I just kind of thought, well, I'll make a sample with it and it won't be that big of a deal because I wasn't going to waste the fabric. I, I didn't have the money to be buying it again. That is something to watch out for if you are working with Spoonflower. It's not their deal. It's just when you're doing your own designs make sure that it is flawless zoom in like four thousand percent and get right up there at those edges and just make sure that there's no issues with the repeat okay so on to the dress itself do not be mistaken i i loved designing this dress i love the dress in general and i definitely love my remade sample i just don't like the original anymore and because you know it served its purpose and it is with every wash and with every fashion show and everything that it went through and it only went through one you know no it went through yeah it went through one it just kind of got sadder and more wrinkly and more faded with time so here is the dress I actually keep it in the tote bag and this is probably the one that if anyone follows my tumblr and I posted like four years ago this was the dress That was when I first got the fabric and I just immediately started cutting and sewing it and it didn't get wrinkly because um, I hadn't washed it or anything like that before. So it looked amazing. And there you can see I used some cheap lace along the bottom because I, I decided I had a choice between this cheapy lace 
and like a higher quality one from Joann's. But that stuff was like expensive. It was like $9 a yard or something. And this was like $2. So I went ahead with the cheap lace because once again, it was just a sample for me. I went ahead and did little details on the, on the waist highs. I wish this had been centered, but unfortunately I had to use scrap fabric. And back then I thought every single dress needs to have waist highs and every single dress needs shirring and every single dress needs to have some kind of shirred straps or something like that. So I just used what I could see. I tried to see how much I could get out of the dress. This template for this dress is actually the same as a bodyline dress. It's the bodyline carousel dress. I'll actually grab it for a second here and show you. So this is the template to make the Morgan My Dear dress. You can see, and what I mean by template is just like what I did was I stretched these shirt straps to see how long they were. I measured the, the, the bodice. I read online about how to trace and make your own pattern pieces, like your basic drafted pattern pieces from other dresses you own and things like that. So for my sample, and I've never made Lolita before, this was a great way for me to go ahead and do that, especially because body line dresses are not really lined. You can measure and see those panel pieces really easily. And I also just really liked the fit of this dress. I really liked the cut. Now, the one thing I didn't do was I didn't do this top part here, which is a separate piece. I just made it all one bodice, but I really liked where this sat on me. So this was my template. So anyway, here's the back of it. It has a quarter shirring panel. This was back when I made little individual corseting rings for you to corset it yourself. And I made it with ribbon. I got the idea to do it with some um, lace later after I had seen a few more body line dresses. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. And I saw that Baby is Star Starshine Bright does that as well. So I really liked that instead. And I ended up doing that because it saves me a lot of time and it looks a lot prettier because this is just, this is just tedious. So don't do that. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Let's see what else. Yeah, the other thing is um, I did not buy a red zipper. I bought a white one, so that looks really noticeable. And I have this really ugly old skull thing because the original one I had on here was a bow and it fell off. So this is what I have. Let's see, what else? Yeah, you can tell I used every piece of this scrap fabric because here is where the edge is on the back of this very badly made waist tie. And it is also very... It's very short and pitiful and very sad. I usually like to make them about 30 inches. I think this one's probably only about 25 inches, 27 inches. So it's pretty small. The other thing is this buttonhole is atrocious because when I first started sewing Lolita, I had a hand-me-down sewing machine that was an industrial sized it was sewing machine. It was literally made completely out of metal and it had all kinds of issues with the calibration like that was just how it was when I got it. So it couldn't actually do a zigzag stitch or a buttonhole. So it created this really nasty looking zigzag buttonhole thing. And I had to actually go in and hand sew the buttonhole area in order to make it look prettier. So that was pretty sad. Oh yeah, also this has no interfacing in it. And the thing I've learned is to put at least one of the sides should have interfacing. One, like, cause this is double sided. Just put it on one. You don't need to put it on both because if you put it on both, then it, sometimes it's too stiff to actually make like a nice bow tie out of. So just one side would be good because none at all just makes this turn into like a crinkly mess. Yeah, the thing that I was really proud of on this was the pin tucks. And I know I only did like two right here, but I really love pin tucks when I got into Lolita because Mary Magdalene had a lot of dresses with pin tucks. So I was really proud that, that I did that on this atrocious dress. Yeah, I, everything about this is not even what anyone who ordered this got. Like I did this on the cheap because I didn't care what the quality of the sample was for me until later when I decided I wanted a nice one for myself. But that's why it's got like Rochelle lacing on, on most of this. Like this is all Rochelle lace because it was just some cheap, um, some vintage lace that I had. I did use this though. This stuff was really pretty. It's like a black like eyelet 
lace. It was really pretty. So I did keep that in the original design. I, what I ended up doing was I believe I put that same black eyelet lace around the bottom of some of them. The other thing I did that I changed was it doesn't say like my name and truly darling at the bottom. I just did that at first because I didn't know how to put my own branding on it. So like I said, it was a newbie, it was a newbie dress, newbie thing that I did. You can't really, you can't even really tell that it's faded. But the blacks, basically the biggest issue with Spoonflower is the blacks are not true blacks for the cotton sateen at the time five years ago when I bought it. Now the cotton sateen has improved over the course of many years and actually my favorite fabric that they have is the chiffon and the poly crepe de chine. They are amazing and they are way cheaper than this cotton sateen. So I recommend if you're gonna make yourself Lolita get that poly crepe de chine or the chiffon because they are way nicer. Now you will need to layer your dresses more meaning you might need to double line and like not just a regular lining but you might actually have to double line it because they are a little bit thinner of fabrics but that is great especially right now for the summer if you have a dress that is nice and flowy and um, doesn't wrinkle and won't fade so poly crepe de chine or chiffon all right the other thing is let me show you these this horrible hemline i did <laughs> this is fun oh my gosh okay so here's the bottom of it and i didn't really realize till i flipped it over that this hadn't lined up and at this point I was already putting my top stitch on like my finishing stitch so it just looks bad actually oh you know what no okay I remember now yep because look right there look at that so actually I did notice that this looked bad and what I had done was I used some of this and I actually covered it all along the bottom but I ended up needing that for another project later, so I decided to seam rip it all off of here. And that is why at the seam of the dress, that's why this is all ripped up because I actually removed it. So there you go, that's another little tip. If you have an old sewing project that didn't look, at, look that great, but you spent money on parts of it that have nice high quality parts of it, you can always just remove it and reuse it because it's your project, it's your deal. You know what I mean? Like. <sighs> Recycle, right? Like, <laughs> now I'm going to show you the inside of this dress. This is not lined because when I was learning how to sew and how to make it, I often had to, my pattern pieces, for whatever reason, they were not always perfect. They, like, basically, they wouldn't always make the dress look the same, like, every time I made it. Like, I could use the same pattern pieces, but it would never come out the same every time I did it. So, that's something that I had to learn like with time, how to make it look like consistently better. The dress isn't lined because I used to have to pin the pattern pieces that I had sewn onto the mannequin back here inside out. I would pin it to the dress inside out like this and then I would actually like take it in and pin it in places where it looked baggy or weird because it was still learning. That is why this dress isn't lined. Now I still went out of my way and I pressed a lot of these inner seams it doesn't look that bad it looks like maybe like a bodyline dress or even like a baby dress in terms of like the fact that you can see the sewing now the only thing is though is that baby usually does this thing where they put like um something right here like a piece of fabric here that's got interfacing on it so it keeps the top of the bodice sort of like stiff and secure which would have been a great idea. <laughs> I mean, Bodyline does that too, but I didn't, it was like a, it was like a weird piece and I didn't like really, I was like, what purpose does that serve? So I didn't put it in there. <laughs> but most of this is surged and pressed because I did finish most of my seams. <laughs> yeah, and there's my zipper. But yeah, that is how this first jumper skirt I ever made, first sample I ever made looks. I'm going to grab the um, remade sample so you guys can see the difference in quality. And let me just note that the remade sample was made only about a year after. So you can see one year's improvement in quality between this one and the newly made one with the different fabric. Okay, so... Here is the, right here, this is the, this is the new one that was made a year after, this is, this is the old one. 
Now, now that I'm holding them side by side, you can kind of see the color difference and things like that. This was another problem of spoon flowers was they had a lot of trouble with true reds. So as you can tell, this is a lot more of a nice, pretty saturated red. And this looks more of like, like a weird sort of like dull red. And this is from a company called ADV. And ADV was good at the time. Their process for uploading was a little bit different. Their process was they had a cotton sateen, I think it's 30 or $33 a yard, and you just upload the one strip of your design and then they just kind of promise they'll repeat it, but you don't get to see how that's gonna look. Like the way, you know how Spoonflower has a little like, you can see your design repeated per yard so you can kind of like lay it out the way you want. ADV doesn't have that, they just, you know, you send it to them and you just kind of hope for the best. And luckily, like I just sent it to them in the same format I sent for Spoonflower and it luckily it worked. Yeah, let's take a look at this new one here so I can show you guys the difference. Okay, so the first thing I did on the new one was I did not do the scrunched straps because I, I didn't feel they were necessary for me because I think the scrunch straps are great for people who want to have the choice to wear their dress higher or lower. Like people with bigger busts, scrunch straps are great because you can adjust where you want it to sit. But I didn't need that because the sample was basically, uh, I made it like a default medium so it would fit me or someone else in the fashion show. So there's the back of it. The other thing was I made these straps one-sided where I made the back black so I saved myself some fabric. And I also made them pointed at the bottom and I did manage to properly line it up so I could put in the center of these, I could put a little frame. So I was very happy about that. The other thing too is I managed to line this up kind of, so I have like the deers right there. I do wish that this was lined up a little bit more. I didn't learn how to do this where I line everything up perfectly until a little bit later, but I did learn how to do a hidden hem seam, so you can't even really see it. I, I had to hand stitch it in there. There is a setting on your sewing machine, so you can do it, but I, I just did it by hand. I'd seen some vintage dresses done that way. The other thing is, look at this gorgeous lace, so much better, so much better. And it's like, it has like these little crosses on it. I got this on Taobao. It's just so much prettier. The only thing is it's very long lace, so I had to sort of account for that in terms of like how long the skirt was and all that to make sure it sat in the proper place. I simplified the design. See how this has two, this has like two rows. I actually never really wanted that originally. I wanted it to look sort of like the Infanta Snow White dress. So I wanted just one row of really nice high quality lace on either side of my pin tucks like that instead of like this. So I did this just because I was experimenting, but I realized later I really like the way this looks. The other thing I have on here is I have a little deer charm. And this was something I was going to do with all of my dress releases was I was going to include a little charm, a removable charm that, that had to do with the theme of the dress. But it was something that I couldn't always find charms for the themes of the dresses. So I didn't go for that. I also used way better lace, like higher quality lace for this because I found a shop on Etsy that sold it for like really cheap. And also, we don't have that ugly line, that ugly red line. I actually managed to fix that. And also, you can see right here, I learned a better logo placement. So now the bottom doesn't have to say, uh, you know, my name and truly darling along the bottom. Because it kind of, it didn't look good to do it that way. The other thing was, I used little bow buttons instead of just plain black ones. And I moved them inward on the original dress. You can see that I have them on like the very edges, which is noticeable and not that cute when you decide to not wear it with waist highs. Then it, you just got two buttons sticking out on the side of you. So I decided to move them inward on this dress. So that way, if I remove the waist highs, it's not gonna be as noticeable. So this dress also is not lined. Oh wait, no, it is lined. <laughs> it is lined. Just the, the bodice, I don't, but no, it is. Oh yeah, this is also when I started learning how to do stuff like, I made like extra long straps, so I made like a few different buttonholes for them. This is also when um, I got a good sewing machine. My sister, for Christmas, she had actually got me a real 
nice um, brother sewing machine. And I almost cried the first time I made a beautiful buttonhole because it was such a pain on the old one. So let me show you the inside of this dress. Something I've learned that's really odd, and I don't know why this is, but when a dress is fully lined, and I noticed this for like brand dresses too. So if, when a dress is fully lined, when you wash it and then you hang it up to dry, or if you wash it and then you throw it in the dryer for a little bit, it actually doesn't wrinkle as much if it's lined, but if it isn't lined, it will. Like I have Unico and Bloomland from Baby the Starshine Bright, and it is not a lined dress. And if I don't lay that thing out when it's damp and pull it all the wrinkles and make sure it looks nice, it's going to just wrinkle as much as that old sample that I just showed you would. Okay, so here is the lined version. It's sort of an odd lining because I still didn't know how to do the whole sandwich thing. So basically you can still see the seams, but it is nicely lined. This is also when I used to have to like sort of hand sew this in here. <laughs> like what I would do, did I hand sew it? No, what I would do is I actually like would pull it up over the dress and I would just sew it like that. So when it came down, you know, that you couldn't really see the seam too much here. But I found out a better way to do that over, I think, I think like by the end of that this year that I made this dress, I found out how to sandwich dresses and do it properly. The other thing was, you can see I have like where I sew the buttons on. Ideally, when I did, when I would make them later, what I would do is I'd just sew it to the outer lining. I wouldn't sew it to the inner lining because you want the inner lining to be kind of free flowing. The other thing is I used a real red zipper, so it doesn't look bad. The other thing I should have done was like maybe sewn these two edges of my lining together just to keep it all together. That was something I didn't really do for this one because it wasn't a huge deal since it was just my personal piece. And the other thing I noticed was ADV's um, quality for their cotton sateen is not only is it better, it doesn't fade when you wash it really, but also it doesn't wrinkle as bad and it's more vibrant and it's thicker actually. This is a thicker cotton sateen. So that was both a good and a bad thing because every time they got in a different batch of cotton sateen, I would either get something that is super thick or I got something that was like, you know, still thicker than spoon flour, but it was like semi-thick. And that actually became a problem once when I was making a skirt for a customer and I messaged ADV about it. And I was like, why did you send me a different weight or a different thickness for this cotton sateen? And they're like, we just print on whatever batch we get in. So that's something to keep in mind if you're gonna use something like ADV. Now that was a few years ago though. That was like three or four years ago. I actually don't know what they what they would do now because spoon flour has upped their game a lot with saturation and their reds and all that they look great on the poly crepe machine and the chiffon so there was no need for me to go back to adv but that is something to keep in mind if you decide you want to do a traditional like cotton style lolita dress which i don't really feel like anyone does anymore a lot of people go towards the chiffon and it makes sense because it's a lot softer and a lot flowier so and sometimes it's cheaper the last note i will touch on for my original sample is I'm just going to give you guys a little horror story about when this dress went to its first fashion show. So I had joined a local community and they, they the mod at the time, she was taking stuff to a fashion show and I had a, the sample that I wanted to submit. So I sent it along with her and when they put hang when they hung up everything to get it steamed to put on the models when they steamed this cotton sateen it just it bled red like on the steamer and when i heard this i was horrified not because you know my sample was potentially ruined i mean yes i was upset that my sample might have been ruined but i was horrified to know that spoon flowers original cotton sateen from like five years ago would would bleed that's kind of scary <laughs> so that's something else is that the adv fabric does not bleed but this original one would bleed so this dress basically became completely obsolete it now when i say it would bleed just the red would bleed because we we ended up printing a lot of beautiful pastel prints 
that didn't bleed. We tested it with the steamer. Um, we ended up doing a lot of those sort of dresses later. So the lighter colors were, were safe, but this red just did not, it was not safe. So luckily it didn't bleed in a way that was noticeable into the whites onto the dress, but the fact that it bled onto the steamer was just scary. So <laughs> bleeding dress, you know what I mean? There you go. That's a, that's a dark tale story in and of itself. There you go. That is my first dress that I made with printed fabric. And at this point, it's been a long time since I made something like that. But yes, thank you guys for watching. And if anyone has made their own dresses using spoon flower, I would love to see your creations. Uh, please link me to them in the comments. I'm always curious to see like other people's spoon flower creations because I do see a lot of people making dresses, but not a lot of people designing their own fabric and making dresses. So I really would like to see your creations and know your horror stories if they came out kind of bad or your bad ex experiences. You don't have to tell me about just your bad experiences. Either way, let me know in the comments below and have a darling day, guys.